So the one from St. John of the Cross is just one part of a, of a long poem that took him an entire book to explain in a way. He synthesized in, a, in, a, in the form of almost, instead of sutras, he, he used this poem to contain an entire experience that for him was internal and external simultaneously. They say that sometimes the inner experiences are paired with external circumstances. Look how interesting that is. And, and you can see that in this poem that starts saying, oh, dark, what, uh, he says, one dark night, fire with love's urgent longings. He said, oh, the sheer grace, I went out unseen my house being now all still. And he describes in the poem his internal experience of, of living with this urgent longing, with love's urgent longing, unseen because his house, his, his passion was now all still. And the purification process was done. And um, and at the same time, he's describing the situation in which he was in. He was incarcerated by uh, a, the, a group of Carmelites that disagree with the reform that St. Teresa and St. John were proposing. So they became two, two different groups of Carmelites, the, the Kals Carmelites, the one that wore shoes, and the Discals Carmelites with no shoes, like St. John and St. Teresa. And because of this reform, he was incarcerated and uh, tortured. And he escapes unseen from where he was being kept. And he escapes alive and he was able to tell the tale and continue to teach after that. What's important for us is to see that sometimes external circumstances are a, a reflection of process that we have to live through, we have to go through. And sometimes it's hard to say if it's external, caused by internal or internal caused by external. Every line is becomes a sutra. It is a poem, but every line becomes a sutra for meditation. The first one, O night that was my guide. I uh, When I was studying the Cloud of Unknowing, which is a very important mystical text from the Middle Ages. There is one passage there that I couldn't help underlining in, in my study, and that is try to feel at home in that darkness. Yeah. And, and in our experience, if there is a proximity of darkness, um, um, not necessarily physical, but also psychological, we will probably run away from it and, and, uh, and seek something that will uh, cause us to move away from that darkness. Obviously, if someone experiences a, a deep sense of psychological darkness, perhaps that is the time to seek some professional help or, or counseling. That is understood. But what he's saying, he seems to be saying here is that, that uh, this darkness is, 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 uh, is talking to us. This darkness is saying that we don't know everything. We, we have to trust something deeper than ourselves. And we have to we have to go through it. Uh, I remember having read in the writings of Joseph Campbell the same thing, you know, that the, the hero has to, he or she has to go into the underworld. Conditions are different there. The, the underworld is not governed by the parameters of the external world. And yet that's a necessary journey. And, um, and St. John of the Cross is now saying that this darkness that he was going through, that was his guide, it's almost extraordinary. He's saying that this darkness is dearer than the morning's pride. 
the essential teaching is that in the depths of his darkness, he found union. The union between the soul and God, or the soul and the, the eternal, if you like. And this union, he qualifies again, and obviously this must be a testimony of something that happened to him. It's not just a poem. It's not by far an intellectual union, because he says in the last line, transfiguring them into each other. This is his legacy, not only for students of mysticism, but for spiritual, those who aspire for spiritual understanding. And uh, he becomes a revered teacher. <laughs>